Hello Kerbal Arts and welcome to Kerbal Space Program and building a space probe. Right, someone out there asked me how do you build a space probe? Well I'm going to do this using the new squads mod which is Asteroid Day, their official mod where you have to go and discover new asteroids by building a space probe and setting it in an orbit near Eve or our or Venus. Well, the real life one is going to go around Venus. Ours, because we only have Eve, is going to go orbit near Eve. Well, it's going to go in orbit. I'll show you in a moment, anyway. And basically, this is to bring awareness of the space pro. Well, the space satellite that B612 are trying to build. They're not funded by NASA or any space agency. Uh, they're funding it all by themselves or by donations given to them. So if you want to donate, there's a donation there as well. And they're going to be searching for asteroids that could potentially hit Earth. Okay, let's show you what you need to do. Well, if we zoom out from Kerbin, we want to get the orbit near Eve. You can see Eve here. We want to get it between Eve and Kerbin. And basically, you want to do that because you want the telescope to look away from the sun because you can't look for asteroids when you're pointing towards the sun you can be hit by the glare and there's, there's a little graphic here as well on the bottom right showing the actual mission it's going to be pointing away you'll have a large field view away from the sun to look for asteroids using the infrared telescope so you can detect the light hitting away from the sun hitting it and you can see the asteroids much easily you haven't got the glare of the sun and you're looking at just the heat of the asteroid. Anyway, let's get to this mission on how to build it. Right, if you download the mod, I'll put a link in the description below so you can download it if you want. You get four extra parts. First part you get is a probe core, and if you want to build a satellite, the first thing you need is a probe core. This will give you control of the spacecraft. It'll also, you know, it acts like your Kerbal, except you can't do any EVAs or anything, basically. You do get less things with it. You don't get as much power, electricity power with it. Although this might be enough. Oh, we'll add an extra battery anyway. And the other part you get with this is the infrared telescope. So go ahead, get that plonk there on top there. You get a high gain antenna. Should I put it there? Open them up. Oops, <laughs> wrong way around. I'll get in with the telescope. Uh, it's prop there, yep. Yeah. High gain antenna. So we can transmit the data back to Earth and tell him, oh, there's an asteroid here in there. And last but not least, you get these larger solar panels. Now, they're slightly larger than these small, pathetic little. <laughs> Um, photaic panels, photovoltaic panels, and they'll give you an extra boost. So we'll go ahead and put two of them on there. Now, why is this got a shield around there? Well, an infrared telescope actually looks at heat, and the idea is an asteroid that's passing close to Earth because it'll be this telescope is pointing towards there heat from the sun will reflect off the asteroid and get picked up by this infrared telescope and that's what infrared means is heat the heat signature of the asteroid so not only will this not have the glare of the sun but it'll be using the sun to reflect the heat off the asteroid so you know where it's going and talking about heat this is version 1.0.4 which means that we get these extra radiators and the radiators will radiate the extra heat from the telescope that we want to get rid of. So let's put two of them on there. And that's a good place to put these because the sun will be pointing at this side where you get the power from solar panels. And these will be in the dark, radiating the excess heat of the telescope away. So we've got that sorted out. Right. Now what? Well, we want to have that extra power just in case. Now this has a thousand electricity points on it. 
So if we go to utility yeah, and we need a rechargeable battery, we put that under there. That has a thousand on it as well. Now say something goes wrong, you lose complete control. These whole panels aren't pointed at the stand for some reason, you lose total power, you have no control to point those solar panels back at the sun. So if we go ahead, right click on the battery, click there, and what that does is it stops the power from draining from this battery. So if you run out of power, this is all, say this is at zero, you have no control, you can't point it at the sun. All you have to do is right click on this part while in flight, click on that. Now you have excess power that you can reorientate the spacecraft to point at the sun. And that'll be cool, that's a sort of backup system for your telescope. And I advise you to put that on most of your spacecraft, perhaps a tiny battery, which will give you enough power to reorientate your spacecraft, get the solar panels into view of the sun, and you're, well, you're saved, your mission is saved. You don't have to splotch another spacecraft. Okay, so that's our telescope. We need some way of thrusting about. No advice using the FLT200 fuel tag. I haven't worked out what would cost a person to orbit close to Gilly or Eve, sorry, not Gilly. And use a Terrier engine. Right, that gives us 2173 meters per second. That should be enough. I can't see why not. So we'll use that. Now we all have to do is build the rest of this up. Okay, first off you want a decoupler. And then get aerodynamic. And we want the protective shells, airstream protective shell. So we can build a fairing around it. Now, some of you may note that I'm not actually putting RTS on this. You don't actually need RTS for this. In fact, I have forgotten something. Take that away. Now, if you go to command and control, get advanced inline stabilizer, prim on the bottom there. That'll give you extra control of your rocket. Basically, all that is is sort of spinning wheels within there. And when they spin, the entire telescope spins with it. Because if with every reaction, every action, there's an opposite reaction. Newton's third law, I believe. And that gives you the control to move, maneuver your rocket, your rocket, your space probe around, point it in the right direction. You don't need RCS thrusters for doing that. And you can move your rocket, your telescope around with a fuel tank and the rocket. So yes, that saves a lot. It does use electricity, so be careful when using it. Right, now we need to build the, how the, the one that's gonna get us into interplanetary space. So FLT 400 fuel tank, another Terrier engine, and we're sorted. Now all we need to do is build something to get it up into space. Okay, so decoupler again. And fuel tanks, yes, this one. See what happens when we put three of them. There's the 800 fuel tanks and a swivel engine. Okay, our thrust to weight ratio from the start is low. So, let's go ahead and build something a bit bigger. First off, go to structural. Get a slightly larger adapter. Ba bump. Ding. Done. Now we can add our fuel tanks. Okay. In fact, I don't like the look of orange. Now we can go to the engines and I suppose a mainsail engine. 
131. It's got 3,937 meters per second. That's enough to get us into orbit. But to be sure, let's get some radial decouplers. Put two on the side. Go to the engines and get our Thumper solid rocket fuel boosters. Okay, aerodynamics, we need some nose cones for them. Where's the point you are there, sir? Oh, that's cool. And don't forget to strut everything up. Because you don't want these wobbling around while you're trying to thrust up. You'll lose control and you'll lose your spacecraft. You lose your multi million dollar spacecraft. Right, the last things we need to do is add some aerodynamic wings. Let's get use these. These enable us to keep control of the rocket as we're ascending through the atmosphere and keep the rocket pointing in the right direction as well. Let's also put some struts from here. To the top of our spacecraft. Oh. If you do have trouble like that, get the octagonal strut. Put it on the side there. Grab your struts again and leg them onto that. There you go. That's good. Just some launch clamps now. And then we can sort out the staging. Okay, so staging. Right, first thing we want every we want the rockets to fire at the same time. Launch clamps to decouple at the same time. Solid rocket fuel boosters should run out before the main engine so we need to couple them then once the main rocket is finished with we'll decouple that we'll fire up the transfer stage which we should be in space by then so we can get our fairing down to there that'll boost us into interplanetary space we'll decouple that then use the final rocket to get our final orbit so I'm not entirely sure what they're going to call a spacecraft. We'll just say... Ah yes, that's right. They're going to call it the Sentinel Infrared Telescope. So let's name it the same. Sentinel... Sentinel, sorry. Sentinel Telescope. Okay, we'll save that. And let's go to the launch pad. I'll see you there. Well, here we are, Kerbalot, ready to launch this Sentinel spa spacecraft or satellite into orbit around the sun near Eve and that'll enable us to look for ta for unknown objects for ones that could potentially cause problems for our Kerbals and endanger their lives and this is all privately funded so let's have, hope everything goes well in fact let's engage the SAS full thrust in fact let's go half thrust I don't think we need full thrust Bring up our Kerbal Engineer, so we know what we're doing. So in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, launch! And up we go. Maintain your thrust to weight ratio at about 2, and you should be fine. Control the thrust and get ourselves a nice gravity turn. No, 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 and we've lost control. Houston, we have a problem. them I 
That's what happens when you don't pay attention. Let's retry that anyway. One. Now list over slightly. If you have a joystick, you maybe have find the control, but I'm used to using the keyboard too. So. Now do slowly and make sure you stay relatively close to that yellow mark. That way you sh the aerodynamics shouldn't tip you over. And don't go too fast, I've also found that can flip you over as well. Okay, slowly let's over. Now what we want to achieve is about an 80 kilometer orbit or 80 kilometer apapsis. You see on this indicator the mod here. Well, come on you. If you haven't got this mod, use the map screen, click on the apapsis icon and see 80, let's go to 85 and X kill. Now let's create a maneuver. Let's just get into orbit first. Eighty four, eighty six, okay, that's fine. It's gonna take a forty second burn. Now let's see how much fuel we've got. We've got plenty of fuel actually. See how our electricity is running. Not too bad at the moment. Okay, we're in space. So let's walk to manure. As we're almost there. Discard that fairing because we don't need it. Now let's get into orbit first. Okay, so where are we? What you saying is 20 second burn either side. perfect maneuver this is showing you the amount of speed you need to change in an instant to achieve that maneuver so the best thing to do is burn half that estimated burn for and after I know most of you probably already know this but I'm just telling you for the people who don't know this so don't bug me okay slow down fast Whoop. we've overburned slightly but not to worry because it just means our orbit's gonna be higher and we're not gonna crash back into space. We're not gonna crash back into Kerbin, so we're fine. Okay, so let's go and plan what we need to do. All right, now, Eve's up by here. Kerbin's traveling in this direction, so if you wanted to get higher orbit than Kerbin, we thrust our rocket in that direction. But we wanna get lower. And using the old birth effect or vast orbiting curbing, we can thrust this way and get our orbit going lower. And what is the old birth effect? Alright, for those who don't know, the old birth effect is the fact that we are orbiting, curbing, and look at our speed. That's quite a large, that's quite a high speed. And if you use that speed, you can it take Basically, it uses a lot less energy to get that extra speed than it would if you were in a higher orbit at a lower speed than it would to get into that higher orbit. Basically, it's just meaning that the lower, if I get to the map view, can I, can I show you here? 
No, where did it go? So our orbit is too circular. It's safe. The orbit was up here. If I add a maneuver node, it would take a lot more energy for us to get that apoapsis up higher there than it would be for us to actually get our higher orbit from here up to there. See? A lot less energy. So that's the best time to thrust. Okay, and how is thrusting higher going to get us into a lower orbit around the sun? Well, if you point in the opposite direction of your orbit, pro retrograde, we lose the speed compared to that of curbing. So we're dropping our orbit, we're dropping our speed that we've got from curbing down. It's like using the gravity of curbing to slow us down. So to do that, you go to about 45 degrees here, add maneuver. If I zoom out a bit so we can get the orbit of the Caribbean up, I thrust this way enough to get us out of the influence of the Caribbean. See now, our apoapsis has gone slightly higher, so let's adjust that a bit just by oop, select a node and moving it about a bit. Move. Okay, so that's good. We're coming down as efficient as possible and we want it to be close to Eve. So where is that? That's 10 million kilometers. So let's do that. That's only going to take us 985 meters per second. Get onto that maneuver node and thrust up. Stage, stage. Ooh. Okay, let's go and check that, see what we've got here. So we're on 10 million kilometers from there. Sorry, over 10 million kilometers. I think. No, that is, that's, no, yes, yeah, that's 10, kil, 10 million kilometers. Me and my numbers, not working well. Okay. So let's time warp to our escape. Come map, get rid of the UI. So we can watch Kirby and escape, or us escape from Kirby. Kirby is such a tiny dot now. Okay, we've changed three of our influence. Let's plan our next maneuver. Add maneuver. Circularize our orbit as best as possible. Whoa. Once this starts swapping places, then you know that you're going to get a near circular orbit. That's good enough for us. It's only going to take 689 meters per second. Now, we do have <laughs> overly an abundance in fuel. In fact, you might be able to get away with just a launch vehicle and this small engine. So, if you are building this, don't forget that all right guys we've arrived at the moon node and this is quite thing let's get rid of this stage i know we've got a lot of fuel in it we could have used but i don't want that in the same orbit as us that'll be now in a high orbit may impact the curbing at some point right this burn is going to take about six in. to a slope.
Okay, maybe not so slow burn. Okay, so now we're in a orbit. Let's reorientate our spacecraft. We're So we're pointing those solar panels at the sun, and we're not going to damage the infrared telescope by pointing it at the sun. And now we can start log tracking. Your focus telescope out into space, scanning for celestial bodies. Yeah, you can get science in this, so if you're in Korea mode, you can do that. Start object tracking. Now mapping asteroid pass in near Kerbin's orbit. Now we've got to map. Now does it track things over time? I'm not entirely sure. I haven't read the instructions to this. All I know is that you can use that to track objects. Well, let's fast forward time. I see. Yes, we are tracking asteroids in other places. So let's view them in tracking station. See if we can start tracking them. Track object. Track object. Track object. Track object. Yeah, see, now, now tracking objects that are further away than they are in. than you would from curving. Because normally you'd only get the ones that would be tracked by curving from the tracking station. And the ones that pass around near around curving. But now you can track asteroids passing around curving. Um, Around Kerbin's or and Eve's orbit, but away from Kerbin. So you have more advanced warning, I suppose. Okay, are there any of these gonna impact Kerbin or come close? No. I suppose that's it for this episode. And it didn't take us long to build a satellite, didn't take us really that long to get us into orbit around Eve. In fact, this is an easy challenge. And in real life, this mission cost less than it would to build a freeway uh, bridge or something like that. I'm sure it said that on, on the information. But anyway, the link in the description below for downloading this mod. I don't think it's worth me putting this up for download. It's easy enough to construct. Just follow the instructions. And it doesn't take that much effort in to actually get it into orbit. Around Eve and Caribbean. So why not give this a go? And have some fun. Anyway, I'm Orbator. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you want more videos like this, subscribe. My mining operation will be a bit late this week because I was trying having problems upgrading to 1.0.4. Weird things happened. I'll let you know in that video. Anyway, I'm Orbiter. Trust me, I'm an engineer. Beep, 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 beep,